For billions of years, Earth has been the only known place in the universe capable of supporting life. But in the last 100 years, humans have transformed the face of this planet at an unprecedented pace. Climate crisis, pollution, and population explosions have raised one critical question. Can Earth remain our home forever? Meanwhile, the red planet, once just a tiny dot in the night sky, is now the target of the most ambitious space missions of the century. Mars, a dry and cold world hundreds of millions of kilometers away, is now being seriously considered as humanity's second home. But can humans really live on Mars? Is our technology advanced enough? And why do many scientists believe moving to Mars is no longer a dream, but a necessity? Data from NASA shows that global temperatures are rising, sea levels are increasing, and natural disasters are becoming more frequent. The climate crisis is no longer a future threat. It's happening now. In this situation, one crucial question arises. If Earth becomes uninhabitable, where will humanity go? The most popular answer, Mars. Mars is the only planet in our solar system considered even remotely possible to inhabit. But how realistic is this dream? Can humans truly live on Mars? And more importantly, do we actually need to move there? Segment 1. Why Mars? Mars was chosen not because it's similar to Earth, but because it's the only option that makes some sense. Mars has days and nights like Earth, changing seasons, and polar ice caps that could be a water source. It's also relatively close, only about 225 million kilometers from Earth. In certain missions, it could be reached in six to nine months. Its surface is solid, unlike Venus, where the heat could melt metal, or Jupiter, which has no solid ground. Mars also contains carbon dioxide that could potentially be converted into oxygen, and its thin atmosphere offers a small amount of protection from cosmic radiation. Segment 2. Can humans live on Mars? Short answer. Not yet. Mars is currently extremely hostile to human life. Temperatures can drop to 125 degrees at night. Its atmosphere is 100 times thinner than Earth's and composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide. There's no oxygen, no breathable air pressure, and no natural shielding from solar radiation. A human on Mars without protection would lose consciousness within seconds. Long-term exposure to radiation could also cause cancer if we don't have adequate shielding. However, technology is advancing. With sealed habitats, air recycling systems, hydroponic farms, and advanced spacesuits, scientists believe living on Mars is not impossible, just incredibly difficult. Segment 3. Why move to Mars? This question is more philosophical than technical. We may not have to move to Mars, but we need options. Earth faces massive threats. Nuclear war, global pandemics, extreme climate change, even asteroid impacts. Colonizing Mars could serve as a life insurance policy for humanity. Elon Musk calls it the effort to make humanity a multi-planetary species. If one planet fails, at least a colony on another can preserve civilization. But moving to Mars doesn't mean giving up on Earth. In fact, if we can create life on a dead planet, it will make us appreciate how precious our living planet truly is. Segment 4. Major Challenges to Mars Getting to Mars presents enormous technical challenges. The cost, fuel requirements, cosmic radiation, and communication delays, signals can take up to 20 minutes to travel one way, are all serious obstacles. Every mission needs to bring oxygen, food, water, medical gear, and emergency supplies. Once we arrive, the real challenge begins. Building radiation-proof shelters, finding water sources, developing local farming systems, and maintaining mental health in an isolated, dangerous environment. There's also the risk of tech failure, human conflict in tight colonies, or even difficulties in reproduction and childbirth in Mars's weak gravity. Segment 5. When will humans actually live on Mars? Scientists are optimistic that humans could set foot on Mars by the 2030s. But living there permanently? That's a whole different story. It may take 50 to 100 years before we can build a self-sustaining colony. Early missions will likely include scientists, engineers, and robotic assistants. Gradually, infrastructure will be built, technology refined, 
and colonies expanded. If everything goes well, our grandchildren might one day learn about humanity's first home on another planet. Mars is not an escape, it's a challenge, a massive project that pushes the limits of science, technology and human resilience. But before we settle on the red planet, there's one thing we must remember. Earth is still the only place truly suitable for human life. We can't afford to ruin it just because we might have somewhere else to go. Caring for Earth and exploring Mars are not opposing ideas. In fact, they must go hand in hand. Because from Mars, we may finally see how valuable this small blue planet we call home truly is. So, can we really live on Mars? Maybe not yet, but one thing is clear. Exploring Mars is not about escaping Earth, it's about learning to appreciate it. Because behind every challenge, Mars teaches us a powerful lesson that our true home always has been and still is, our small blue planet. If you enjoyed this topic, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more epic science stories like this.